Okay, good afternoon. Thank you very much, Dr. Wang, for the kind of introduction. Uh, my name is Jun Liu. I'm currently doing my postdoc in the University of, uh, at Buffalo, which is not really far away from here. And it has been covered by snow for two weeks. So, <laughs> so uh, today I'm going to talk about a, a, a new phenomenon we observe from SPM system and how we develop into uh, real applications. So let me first ask you guys a question. How many of you have uh, been electrically shocked by touching an object in the winter? Oh, almost all, every one of you, right? So that is what we call contact electrification. If you touch two materials together, you're going to have charge transfer, right? Depending on the materials you have, you can either get positive or negative charges. And on another perspective, if you look at the energy dissipation of friction, there are actually different ways. The most common things we, I mean, everyone has experienced is the heat. If you rub your hand together, you're gonna, you're gonna warm your hands up, right? Um, other ways can be electron hole power excitations, if the energy uh, and momentum meet certain cri uh, criteria. And also, if it's had, uh, it sufficient energy, uh, it can also kick the electron off, the so-called exoelectrons. And even more, they can actually decay and emits a photon that's called triboluminescence. So people have been thinking that, OK, for those electricity, can we actually use it for, for, for energy harvesting? Because people like us, we are walking around every day. So we have wind, we have tidal wave. They have the tons of mechanical energy out there. Can we actually recycle them for, for, for practical application? The answer is yes. However, for most of the uh, existing technology, like piezoelectric, or the traditional triboelectric generator based on polymer and metals. There's a huge problem there because the mechanism they have is based on the so-called dielectric displacement currents. So they can get high voltage as high as 1,000 volts. However, if you look at the currents, it's actually tiny and a little small. Right? But the reason is that the materials you use is a dielectric. It's an insulator. The, re the impedance is really high, so there's tiny little currents you can get. So uh, one day I was running this uh, experiment about two years ago uh, when I was doing my, uh, uh, my PhD. My supervisor gave me a piece of sample, which is MOS2. He said, hey, June, could you check the conductivity of this guy? I said, sure. Um, so I mean, I assume most of you guys are AFM expertise, uh, experts. So uh, basically, a, a conducting AFM, you just apply voltage and see how much current you can get. And then you tell the uh, conductivity distribution, right? And then uh, on that day, actually, I made a one mistake. I forgot to apply the voltage. Okay, so you're not supposed to see anything, right? But surprisingly, I actually see a constant current when I scan my metal tape on this uh, MOS2 layer. And then this doesn't make sense because all the energy harvesting, like piezoelectricity or triboelectricity, they're also in the oscillating AC form. There's no way you can get a DC. And all my group members say, "Hey, this should be an artifact." Uh, probably from laser and things like that. I say, okay, let's see. Um, well, we did a lot of experiments. We exclude all the artifacts. And then we're trying to see what is the characteristic of this power generation, this DC power generation. And then we did in-situ IV uh, uh, characterization of different, uh, uh, the grain one, two, three, because those three grains shows different uh, level of power output. And the conclusion we made is that if your tip and sample forms a short key, type of context, that DC will come out. If it's an ohmic type of feature, nothing will happen. That's the conclusion we made. And then this is, appears in uh, Nature and Technology. We're lucky. And then people say, OK, MOS2, we know oh, it's fancy material, two-dimensional materials. But if your assumption is correct, can you actually also find similar phenomena in other materials? They say, well, let's see. So we just got a piece of most commonly uh, used semiconductor, which is silicon. And then we rub it with metal tape, and then similar things actually occur. So you can see the currents coming out when you uh, do the scanning of the tape on the sample to see AFM. And in order to figure out how much open circuit voltage we can have, we just apply an external uh, bias to the system. And then we see that around 120, uh, 200 millivolts, that uh, currents will be canceled. Then we figure out, OK, uh, there is some, something happens here, which is very different. And then we further compile the characteristic of this power output uh, with uh, uh, KPFM. Basically, KPFM will tell you how much charge can be accumulated uh, during the friction. 
And then we compile with CFM and we realize something that, okay, so instead of staying at the surface, those charges actually, they're coming down. They're com coming through the whole system instead of staying there. And people are still not really satisfying. He said, oh, especially one guy said, oh, you, you AFM guys always can publish good papers, but you poor AFM guys can never make it happen in the real life. But I would say, do, uh, don't say that too early. Let's see, <laughs> okay? So I grabbed one metal tip, which is not in nanoscale, but everyone can find it in their lab, which is a, uh, a tester probe, a multimeter probe, which is made in metal. And they're rubbing the silicon. Well, if you, can, if you look at the features here, if I do linear um, uh, friction, you will see a constant power output, currents and voltage, all in DC film. And, all, and, and very interesting, they appear simultaneously. So in piezoelectricity or triboelectricity, uh, conventional triboelectricity, voltage and current, they don't appear uh, at the same time. They always have a phase because of the changing capacitor. But right now, say, if you do continuous rubbing, you will see a continuous voltage output and continuous current outputs. And if you calculate the current density of it in, in the order of 10, uh, 10 ampere per meter square, which is three orders higher than all the existing mechanical energy harvesting technologies. And then we say, okay, so if it's going through the system, and if you look at the silicon, silicon has a, um, a very thin oxide right, on the surface, around one to two nanometers then what would be the mechanism of this electron to go through? We know what, uh, silicon oxide have a very high uh, band gap. It's probably hard for those guys to get across the barrier. Then we say, well, probably there's another mechanism there. So what we did, we actually, um, we use atomic layer deposition and we tune the surface oxide thickness. So we deposit uh, additional uh, silicon oxide on the surface. And what we see is that, okay, the current drops exponentially as a function of these uh, layers. So what's the indication of that? So a lot of people have experience in STM. We all know that this current drops exponentially as a function of distance, right? And then we realize and propose that, okay, those charges, instead of staying at the surface in an insulating layer, they can quantum mechanically, boom, turn on through it. And the silicon is actually a perfect gift from nature because they have this one or two nanometer oxide thickness, and you don't do, you don't have to do too much to 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 you know to to make it happen, and it can be can be recovered easily in air as long as you're exposed to air. So we got a very continuous power output out of that. Oh, this is a little video showing that our, uh, we can charge a little, uh, little uh, capacitor there uh, with this uh, rubbing tip. Uh, I'm not sure whether we can play it or not. Let me see. Probably it's hard. Uh, there's a laser on there. Oh, uh, there's a laser? Yeah. Okay, because there's a video there. Oh, uh, it's okay, I can just skip that part. So basically the take home message is that you don't need any uh, other circuits to condition the power output. Because most of the AC power output in mechanical energy harvesting, you gotta need an external circuit to convert AC into DC and then charge your, charge your battery, right? And that actually takes a lot of energy. But in all cases, since we have DC, continuous DC, you don't have to do that at all. So you can easily charge it up in the real life. Okay, then the next question we come is, uh, okay, so now you're working with semiconductor. What is the most um, commonly used application right now? It's photovoltaics, right? And then. I have an undergraduate student who work with me every day, and then uh, I ask her that, hey, why don't we try to uh, see if any coupling between this photon and this electromechanical uh, e effects. She said, sure, uh, what, what should we should do? Uh, I said, just take, out, take your phone, turn on the flashlight, and we just turn on the flashlight on that frictional system, and boom, we see a current enhancement in this silicon. And if you compel, and also in the AFM system, we try to, based on the, uh, the, the work we had before, we also observe the same similar phenomenon in AMMOS too, if we shine the system with a laser. And then if you look at the, uh, uh, the current output, it's actually 50 times higher. Uh, oh, so the photo current is amplified by 50 times by this frictional uh, uh, induced E. So what happens is, Instead of using a pion junction in the traditional solar uh, solo, uh, uh, cells, which the, of which the electric field is on the order of 10 to the power 6 uh, volts per meter. So here, if you have a friction, uh, frictional force, 
And if you achieve something like one volts or 0.1 to one volts level of voltage, open circuit voltage across something like one to two nanometer oxide, that electric field turned out to be extremely large. And if you have any excitation coming in into the system, and the electron hole pair generated by photon, uh, by, by photon can be dramatically, uh, the separation of them can be dramatically enhanced. So they will be boom, they will be pulled apart by this triboelectric field. Okay, so this is a very new phenomenon. We uh, got this paper published a couple of months ago in Ma on Matter. So in the future, we are also saying that, okay, um, if it works in the tip and the plane uh, uh, configuration, can we actually scale it up? And we are actually coming up with more idea. Can we actually uh, uh, you know, use other plane plane structure? We tried with ITO and silicon, it actually works. You can see the power output enhancement when you uh, have uh, uh, irradiation from here. So this part is pure me uh, mechanical output, and then you see uh, another boost by, the, by shining a laser. Um, so basically, um, another question is, that, okay, so it seems like the AFM or the nanoscale tip works better than a bigger one. Can we actually scale it up with this idea? So the initial idea is as to use MEMS to make a lot of tips, to make tips array. And I was like, well, can we actually find something uh, just uh, already we have, uh, we have already have? So then we actually notice this material, the, the aerogel. Aerogel actually, if you look at the cross section of it, it has a lot of nano size protrusions. And then if you rub them on the surface, they actually will form town, like millions of uh, uh, the nano contact, just like AFM tip with the, with the sample. So you don't have, really have to rely on um, the, the, the very conversion uh, names techniques. And we got a very good results. Uh, with tiny little graphene oxide, we can get something like uh, 15 microampere outputs. Uh, we can get something like two volts uh, open circuit voltage. And we did uh, uh, MD simulation with it. And we come up with an atomic for, uh, uh, atomistic uh, theory to, 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 to characterize the electric field, interfacial electric field uh, uh, with this uh, MD simulation. And also, we are demonstrated that um, we can actually directly power up your, your electronics. We tried like different colors of LED, which um, it works pretty well. It can charge the capacitor easily. And this is a buffalo ball. Um, I hope there's no Chicago guys here. So we have the sim similar things, but uh, that's the NCAA logo. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, I, I think this is a very uh, good example of uh, how to, uh, how we, what kind of new physics we can get from observation using AFM and how we can correlate with other uh, applications. And since this is a very new um, phenomenon and new physics, uh, I think there's a very rich information there which will, which will need a lot more uh, investigation. But I also believe that's a, a, a huge potential, uh, promising potential for future applications in, um, energy harvesting as well as advanced sensing. So thank you very much. That's it. Uh, I would like to take any question. Thanks. Questions? Yes, sir. That's a good question. Just thinking about walking across the carpet in the room. Well, we try. We, yeah, 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 that's a very good question. Um, First of all, I think temperature and humidity are really important. Uh, well, for the humidity speci specifically, uh, we try a very extreme um, condition. We just, take, we just immerse the whole system in water and see what will happen. You still have some signal, but it's probably one third of the original. Because if you look at the water molecules, they, are, they, they can be polarized easily, right? And they, can, they will take away any, any charges at the interface if you want. However, if, if you in, uh, increase the humidity, say by vaporize any water uh, up to something like 40, 60 percent, that's still fine. It still works. There will be some, uh, some, some decrease of the power output, but it still works. So that's for the humidity part. For temperature part, there are a couple of influence. Temperature part, if you, first of all, uh, semiconductors conductivity has a relationship with temperature. Um, and also, um, the temperature will also uh, influence the interfacial electronic excitation because we find out eventually the physics philosophy here is the breakdown of symmetry at the interface. So a lot of people investigate a short contact as static condition, but in the moving condition, you break down the symmetry of it, and the temperature will definitely influence the equilibrium of this process. Yeah, but there's still a lot of details to, to discover. Yeah. Yes? So what is this uh, size you talking about? So you talk about the nano size, you talk about 
the right hand side, well, this is a very good question. So I think size has different, uh, there are a couple of uh, effects here. First of all, is this nano? Then the local pressure will be huge. And then if you look at all the, uh, the existing, uh, uh, what's it called, the, the mechanism for contact electrification right now, they all based on very simplified model, say two parallel plates touching each other. However, if you look at the nano scale right now, if one nano tip touching the surface, that's will that's what you know will, will, will give a lot of perturbation of the local atomic arrangements, and those atomic arrangement uh, 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 perturbation will create a lot of local electric field coming around this tip, and that will have a, a very important uh, uh, influence on the whole things. Um, as a consequence, the nano tip and your, your surface will have higher current density because of these tip effects. Um, yeah, something. I hope this can yeah. answer the question. Yeah. Also, the frequency. How about the rubbing at the different frequencies and Right. This is a very interesting question. Um, basically, if you look at the, uh, so what we have done is from 0 0.1 hertz to 10 hertz. It doesn't show too much difference. This is a very interesting point, because if you look at all the traditional way of it, the piezoelectric or triboelectric, they, they, they are a power output enhanced as a function of frequency, mechanical frequency. But in all case, as long as you're doing friction, even with a very slow uh, speed, very no, fre no frequency at all, if it's a continuous rubbing it, the current and, power, uh, the current and voltage will come out automatically, or simultaneously. So which we believe is not because of the changing capacitance, however, it's related to a non-equilibrium electronic excitation at the interface. There's some coupling there, so as long as that rate of that physical process is uh, it's much quicker than your motion, then we should get a windows to see all those power outputs. But I think it's a very uh, uh, interesting thing because if you think about two other extreme physical uh, uh, system, if you have one metal and metal another metal, you touch them with each other. What will happen? Free main energy will align with each other, right? However, this. If you ask the question, is there any energy transfer during this process? I would say yes. However, as human beings, we have no, uh, we have no way to harvest this energy because the Fermi energy alignment happens at like this. But if you have a metal and insulator, it touch each other, the charges will stay there forever. But somehow we are working in the middle of it. And then I think time scale really plays an important role. Yeah. I think we need the same speaker. Thanks. Okay.